Hi everyone, it's Kendall here and what I have for you today is week five of our Ode to National Park Sew Along, which is hosted by Pat Sloan at her website, ilovetomakequilts.com. This week is a little bit of a longer video for this series as there are a few more steps involved in getting it done, but I think you'll agree with me that the end result is very much worth it. If you haven't done so already, jump over to Pat's website, download this week's free pattern, come back here, and I'll show you how I do it. So this is where I normally say to you, on the board in front of me are all of the pieces and parts cut out as per the pattern. But this week, that's not the case. Because we need 16 of the smaller half square triangles, I am going to show you the eight at a time method. And as such, for the background fabric, if you omit the eight three inch squares and cut two six inch squares instead, uses exactly the same amount of fabric. <coughs> None of the fabric for the tree trunk has changed, but the leaf fabric, we will need again, another two six inch squares. And as you can see here, I've decided to go with two different colors. So to make the half square triangles eight at a time, we need to take those background squares and on the wrong side of that fabric, we need to dissect that block twice on the diagonal from corner to corner. So normally for the two at a time method, we would just go one diagonal line for the eight at a time method, we do need to draw both of those. We need one more half square triangle for the trunk of the tree and for that we need our 5 inch square from the trunk fabric and our 5 inch background fabric that we did cut as per the pattern. We are just going to draw one diagonal line on the back of this background square, match that up right sides together as we did with our other background squares for the 8 at a time, take all of these to the machine and we need to stitch on each side of all of the drawn lines. So on the two at a time one, we'll be able to flip that around and send it back through. Then we'll need to take the two eight at a time ones off the machine and send those back through separately. With our stitching now done for our eight at a time half square triangles, I'm just going to clip these apart and quickly show you on the back what this should look like once we've sewn on each side of both of those drawn lines. Now, before I move ahead, I do like to press all of my pieces first and that settles all the stitches down into the fabric and releases any puckering or tension that's been caused by sewing along that bias. Now for the eight at a time method, we do have to slice these blocks apart in a very specific way. In the instructions I tell you, and earlier I said that I've started with a six inch square and that's not quite true. <laughs> I actually have a six and a quarter inch square, but you don't need to, it just allows for a little bit more fudge room when trimming it down. So what we need to do first of all is grab our square here and we need to cut this in half both vertically and horizontally first. The reason we do this is because if the fabric shifts at all while we're going through this process our drawn lines are still going to be there to guide us for the final cutting. So place your ruler down and in my instance I'm measuring three and one eighth because I did have a six and a quarter inch square. And you will also know that your ruler is in the right place because it'll dissect where those stitching lines cross over. So I'm going to cut that in half vertically. Do the same again horizontally, trying not to move the fabric, which is why I bought in my rotating board, even though I don't really 
put it into action because I've lifted the ruler and it didn't shift. We'll slice this again horizontally now and then we can cut it apart on those drawn lines and proceed the same as when we do the two at a time method. You may or may not have noticed that I set one of the half square triangles aside from that two at a time method that we did for our tree fabric. And that's because we actually only need one of those. Once we've got all these sliced apart, we will press them all to the darker of the two fabrics and then we'll trim them down. To trim down our half square triangles now, I just bring in a square ruler that has a 45 degree line on it. And I line that 45 degree line up with our stitching line or the seam line on the front of the block here. And we make sure that we have enough fabric outside our trim down measurement of four and a half inches on all four sides of the block. And that includes what's under the ruler. We can trim away those first two sides, rotate the block around and place our diagonal back on that seam line. And now we can line up our four and a half inch marks on those freshly cut sides and trim away the final two sides. For all of the smaller ones that need to be trimmed down to two and a half inches, I will bring in my makeshift lock, block lock ruler. Block lock is a tool that you can purchase in different sizes, I believe. But for my purposes, I've just got my little three and a half inch square here and I've put three layers of painter's tape along that diagonal and that gives it an edge that will butt up against that seam allowance and we can trim this down in exactly the same way, making sure that all of our fabric or we have fabric sticking out on all four sides before trimming down the first two. I just find using this for the smaller blocks is a little bit easier than wrangling with the larger square and having that um, painter's tape edge on there just makes it really simple. I'm going to get all 16 of these smaller ones trimmed down and I'll be back with you. We now just need to make a couple of more sections for our tree trunk and for that we need the four and a half inch background squares and our two three inch trunk squares. And we're just going to do a sew and flip on one corner of each of these four and a half inch squares. Now my preferred method for doing these sew and flips is to use the folded corner clipper but I don't always use it in the way it was intended. The way that this tool was designed to be used is as you see me doing here by lining up the measurement of the smaller square, making sure all of the markings are exacting before slicing off the excess fabric. Sometimes what I do, and it's a much quicker way, is I just use the diagonal line or the quarter inch line that is on the tool. And I make sure that that's dissecting both of the corners of the smaller block. And then I slice away the excess as per the previous step so you can see me here I just find a corner on there and then I make sure that that diagonal line is transecting the square and then I find that I get a much more accurate result doing it that way I don't know why it could just be in my brain uh, no idea 
So once we've taken that to the machine and stitched that, we're just going to press out towards that sew and flip corner. And then we are actually ready to start laying this block out. We have all of the units that go together to making up this block, but we are going to start and following along with the pattern by assembling the tree trunk, which just goes together as a four patch. So we're gonna lay that out as per the pattern and four patch construction applies where we'll start by sewing both of those vertical seams. We'll then press towards the solid square for the top row and that half square triangle unit for the bottom row. Nest those seams together and sew our horizontal seam. We now need to take seven of the half square triangle units that we created just before and one solid background square to make the first half of our tree. So the one, well, it's not really a downside, but the one downside to using the eight at a time method is you do get eight identical half square triangle units. If you're wanting a variety in the color of your leaves, you would do them with the two at a time method or even just make them one at a time if you want all 16 leaves to be individual and really scrappy. So I'm just choosing a layout that works for me and then I'm going to sew all of these units in pairs first. I then clip into the seam allowance. Now with that, I clip into but not past the stitching line and in that way I can control which way the bulk of those half square triangles goes and you'll see that when we get there. With those two units done, I'll just now join both of those together to make one set of four before doing exactly the same thing with my remaining two pairs of half square triangles. You will notice because of our little snip and fudge the seam allowance trick that all of these intersections will now nest nicely for when we go to sew this horizontal seam joining our two rows of leaves. Once we actually have this horizontal seam done, I will spin each of those intersections. Now to spin that little intersection or open it up, what we need to do is pick out the stitches that are above the stitching line that we just created on both sides of our piece. Sometimes you can just pop it open as you see me doing here, but sometimes there's a few stray little threads in there that will still catch it. So we bring in our friend Jack just to release those 
And then we open up those seam allowances and we spin them around in all the same direction. So take the lead from the vertical seams that we did. And as you can see me doing here, one will go clockwise, the next one goes anti-clockwise. You just take the lead from the piece that you're working with, open up each of those intersections and that flattens out the bulk and spreads it around a little bit because we do have, in some instances, six, maybe eight layers of fabric coming together at those points. Once I've got that pressed nice and crisply, we will continue to the next bit of the tree. As you would have seen there, to get the seam allowances to go in the direction I needed them to be, I did put another couple of clips in there and I do that all the time. So <laughs> we now just want to attach the unit that we just created to our tree trunk, as you see me doing here, matching up that seam and nesting it in the middle there. So if you followed my pressing instructions, it will automatically nest. We'll stitch that on with our quarter inch seam allowance and I believe I press it down towards the trunk section. So when I came to review this footage, it was brought to my attention that this is the point that the video stopped. But never fear, I restarted a new one and I got it almost up to the, well, right up to the same point. All, all you miss seeing is me laying out all of the half square triangles. So I'll now return you to our tutorial, but I am using very different fabrics from this point forward. Following along with the pattern, we will lay out the other side of our tree now with our remaining half square triangles and our solid two inch squares. And I am going to construct this in exactly the same way. I'm going to sew everything in pairs, do my little snip and shift seam allowance trick, and then get those pairs sewn together, either in strips or as four patches, whichever way works for your brain making sure at each step along the way that we keep everything in the layout that we chose, which for me involved a system of how I sewed these together and how I place them once I take them off the machine. And then I know in my brain exactly where they are, but you do it in whatever fashion works for you. And once we have this unit all together, we'll be able to attach that to the larger unit that we created in the previous step.
And with one final press, our block for this week is done. And here is what my actual block for the quilt looks like. So thanks for sticking with me through losing my video footage. I don't know why this keep happening, but anyway. Here's what this block would look like on point and in repeat. And I've drawn in last week's bare paw blocks just in that center unit there to give a point of difference. Thanks for joining me again this week, folks. And thanks again for putting up with my lost video footage. I really just don't know what's happening there. So maybe it's time to invest in some new equipment. Maybe. If you haven't done so already, I'd love for if you would like the video, share it with a friend, subscribe if you haven't already done so, but most importantly, tickle that little bell icon and you'll be notified of all my upcoming videos. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now.